Sam from Tool Hut. Today's project, kind of a teaser. I'm going to do a series of scope training using different scopes, attempting the same tests. Uh, probably going to put it on my Patreon channel. We are going to put a few of them on the YouTube channel. So if you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel, stay tuned. Today, we're doing the Pico Scope. Uh, kind of the basics with the PicoScope today. Hello, Sam from Tool Hut here today. Today we are going over the first usages of the PicoScope automotive software. So it is going to be a series of scope training. I don't know how many classes it'll end up being, uh, but it will be a series and it, it probably be on my Patreon channel as well. So uh, if you're not subscribed to my Patreon channel, I'll leave the link in the description. Any equipment that you see used in our videos is available on our website or by sending me a message. Uh, the Pico Scope has many options. It may not be listed on my uh, website with all the options. I suggest if you're interested in a Pico Scope that you send me a, a message and uh, or call me from my website or send me a message from my website or something and we can get you going. Okay, after you download the software from the PicoAuto.com uh, website, you're going to have two icons. My suggestion is that you get the latest stable release when you go to the website that fits your operating system. The Pico 6 Automotive is where we're going to spend our focus in the beginning. The Pico Diagnostics also has some tests that we will uh, go over later on down the road in some future classes. So today's focus is going to be the Pico 6 Automotive. So we're just going to click on the Pico 6 Automotive and we'll go from there. Okay, so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask you what device you want to hook up. We don't have a device connected, so we are going to start with the demo mode. This is an important stop that I want you to understand, if, especially if you're opening up files and you don't have a device. So you have to open it in demo mode. I'll show you the difference here. So we're going to hit OK. should come up with a demo, demo file here. Uh, we don't really care what it is. I just want to show you a couple of things here. So uh, looks like an injector to me. Uh, everything's on auto. Again, I don't really care what, about this right this minute, but I want to show you something. So if we hit open, we're going to look at a file that somebody sent. Uh, I'm just going to pick one here. doesn't really make any difference what it is. So here's a cam and crank correlation on a Saturn relay. Notice that my bolts and my division, my buffer, everything is here. I can do anything I want in here. I can manipulate this. Data, I can, I can zoom in but let's let me just show you what happens if we uh, if we don't open it like that so let's just go to our viewer I'm gonna pick another file again it really doesn't make any difference what the file is notice that when I opened it without having a demo mode active I don't know the time base I don't know the volts now I can get all this information in a different method but you can't I like it when it comes up automatically so you can actually 
if you did it properly, you could actually hook up to a vehicle and not have to change any of these settings. So uh, that is the first thing I want to show you. So if you're not using a Pico right now, you're just getting familiar with software and somebody's sending you files, start with demo mode and then open the file from within demo mode. And we'll get more into some files here. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to open the PicoScope automotive software in demo mode. So once you have the PicoScope automotive open in demo mode, understand that this is very advanced software. It's easy to use, but you can do anything you want with it. The more you use the PicoScope software, you're always going to find things that you can do in it something to make your life easier you learn something all the time the more you use it but the you need to understand the basics of the software before you can really get going so i want to go over some some basic features here and we'll kind of go from there so the first thing is over on the left hand side here this is our voltage scale and then the horizontal line is our time base so a scope is nothing more than capturing voltage over time so anything that you add to a scope any accessories whether it be an amp clamp or whatever it is it is just changing the setting from whatever it's reading whether it's amperage or whatever and it's putting it into a voltage so you don't need to have the settings for everything on your scope uh, just understand that everything that gets done with the scope is voltage over time so a couple of the basics here's our channel settings it is set to automatic i'm not a big fan of automotive or automatic so we're gonna hit the arrow to the right and i'm just gonna hit the arrow to the right until I got it kind of where I want it so this is five volts that means from the zero line to the top of the scale is five volts from the zero line to the bottom of the scale is five volts so it's essentially it's a 10 volt scale if you're going negative on your voltage um, most of the time in the automotive world we're not going to see the negative volts uh, unless you get the leads backwards so we're just going to leave it the way it is for right now so if I change the voltage scale, I don't change the reading in the vehicle. Only thing I've changed is the size of my picture. So you can see that we can get our picture down to a point that it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to to keep changing the voltage scale. Again, I'm just in demo mode and I just want you to get used to clicking around on the buttons and seeing seeing stuff happen. So this five mega five milliseconds per division this is from here to here is five milliseconds from here to here is 10 milliseconds so it's voltage in its entirety and time base per division now you can change this if you prefer, if you prefer you can change anything you want in here so i like it the way it is the next thing you're going to do is your sample rate uh, we're not going to get into a whole lot of sample right here. You can also just click on the box here. It should bring up a drop down for us. Maybe not on this one. So we're going to hit the arrow clear. This is where it should have defaulted is the 1 million samples per screen. So that means from, from here to here, it's taking a million samples of the screen. Now you can take more than that. You can take less than that. Uh, don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference to make any more than that now depending on how many channel scope you got whether it's a one channel a two channel a three channel a four channel uh, some people have the eight channel scope it really doesn't matter as far as the usage of the scope it's all the same we're just going to add more channels in other words the more things we can sample at the same time it is one time base and then each sample has its own uh, voltage. So let's go ahead and do something here. Let's see if it'll bring up another channel. And it will. 
so I can make these the same. Depends on what you're scoping. So we're just going to put two things on the screen just to, because a lot of people have two channel scopes. We're going to make it easy. So you notice that the, the first thing is, is that the patterns all over the screen. So we want to get to a point that we can see, I'd like to see repetition, especially in automotive things. You want to see repetition. A lot of times we don't look at just one particular uh, signal. We're looking at multiple signals, but we want to see the repetition. So we're going to increase our time base until we get some repetition on the screen. So now that we got some repetition on the screen, you notice that it still kind of moves around on the screen. So, the first thing you need to understand about scopes is we're not really changing how it's getting the sample. We're making it easier on your eyes is essentially what we're doing. So, we're going to change our trigger. Uh, I'm going to go to repeat. That just means that once I've set up my trigger, it's just going to keep repeating it. Now, notice it put this little diamond right here in the middle of the screen. So, you can change this by here or you can just drag it where you want it I particularly like it over on uh, that side of the screen so the sample mode took a second to, to capture but notice how much more stable my my pattern is um, I could have you know done this manually down here until I got it to where I wanted it you can also choose if you want it on the, on the rising edge or the falling edge, but in my opinion, that's more of an advanced feature. It defaults. Uh, looks like it defaults to the rising edge. So today, I just wanted you to understand how to set up the trigger. Get a couple things on the screen. And we'll go from there. We'll do some more later on, but uh, that's what I wanted to get you today. So, comment, suggestions, thanks for watching. Uh, I try to answer any comments as they come in. Uh, subscribe if you want to. Subscribe to my channel if you want to be notified as I'm releasing new videos. Hit the bell. Have a great day.